Together we are tackling this disease, and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. The Queen's conduct throughout the pandemic has restored some faith in the monarchy. There's no political spin with what she's doing. It's ever more important for the Queen to represent that stabilising figure. Since the start of the pandemic, the Queen has been at Windsor Castle self-isolating with Prince Philip. They were there from mid-March until they went up to Balmoral at the beginning of the summer holidays. So the Queen is returning to Buckingham Palace to carry out some official duties. Um, some people have called that the Queen working from home. That's technically not quite correct. OK, Buckingham Palace is a home and she does have quarters there, but she very much considers London and her London residence as the office and considers Windsor Castle as her home. I'm very glad to have been able to join you. It's interesting to see how the Queen has adapted to her new role, which has had to be effectively virtual. So this is a woman who, throughout her whole reign, her motto has been, I need to be seen to be believed. That is why the Queen wears bright colours, why if it's raining she'll carry a transparent umbrella, because she's always been of the theory that if people are coming to see her, it might be the first and last time in their lives they do so. They want to be able to remember it, they want to be able to say, I saw the Queen. That is why she is so visible and that is why this pandemic has been difficult for her to manage because ordinarily we would expect to see her out doing meet and greets and royal walkabouts even in her advancing years that's been characteristic of her reign she's the most well-traveled monarch in history gosh <laughs> Sounds a very dangerous job. If the only way the public can see her is in video form, then so be it. Of course, she's used to addressing the nation televisually because she does it every Christmas for the broadcast and famously following Princess Diana's death. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In addressing the public directly, she really turned the tide on what had been a lot of negativity towards the royal family. So she understands the power of celluloid and how to use it. And that's why it's been significant that she's given her two televised address during this outbreak and equally a written address just to make sure that the public is reminded that although she can't be seen as much she is still there and ever present and an ever present figure in British society. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. The wartime comparisons that the Queen made in the we'll meet again address um, that wasn't to overstate what's been happening because obviously millions died during the war and it's a different set of circumstances. But I think for a woman of her generation to make the comparison as far as people were feeling in lockdown, that sense of isolation, that sense that all is not what it was, that sense of adapting to a new normal was really very well received because people looked at the Queen and said, actually, of all of the people in public life, you particularly are qualified to comment on this. Obviously, everybody's been extremely busy with the pandemic, haven't they? It's that keep calm and carry on mentality that the Queen epitomises, right? This is the stuff of t-shirts, this is why HM is renowned as Elizabeth the stalwart, Elizabeth the consistent. Um, she's always put duty first and so when it comes to times of crisis we expect her to step up to the plate and have this stabilising, calming effect on the nation. And I also think what's been interesting if you look at Captain Sir Tom Moore, or the Queen's conduct through this, actually we have looked to elder statesmen and women for comfort. There is a sense that the Queen's conduct throughout the pandemic has restored some faith in the monarchy. Let's not forget that only in January, um, the royal family was faced a constitutional crisis of sorts because of so-called Megxit. How would the royal family cope? What would the reaction be? How would they fill the void left by Harry and Meghan? That's not to say there isn't a void that still needs to be filled, but I think the conduct not only of the Queen, but Prince Charles and Camilla, they've done their own bit, they've done um, quite a few distance visits, but also a lot of online communication with their charities. Princess Anne, she starred in that documentary to mark her 70th birthday and I think endeared herself to the nation just by being very practically minded and no nonsense. And then the Cambridges, you know, we've not just seen them react to the pandemic, but also their children. I think that creates a picture of a royal family very much adapting to the new circumstances they face. Amid the, all of the spin of the uh, coronavirus pandemic and this sense perhaps of a government not quite being in control, it's ever more important for the Queen to represent that stabilising figure. And I think a nation in crisis looks to the monarch to try and find a way forward.
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to watch more analysis and comment like this one, please subscribe to the Telegraph YouTube channel.